Hi everybody, uh, welcome to another screencast of yours truly, Michael Zornick. Uh, today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2013. It is 11.26, it's almost time for bed. But before I go to bed, I want to talk a little bit about Numbers. Uh, numbers is Apple's spreadsheet app, and I've been uh, spending a little bit of time in it the last couple of days working on some taxes, and it just kind of occurred to me that, you know, there are a lot of people out there who actually aren't really good with the spreadsheet apps. And not to say that I am an expert by any means, but I'm definitely um, adequate. And so uh, I thought I'd do a little spreadsheet uh, screencast here to show you how things work. So to get started here, I'm um, just going to create a new spreadsheet. Um, Apple gives you a lot of kind of sample ones you can kind of start with, but we're just going to start with a blank one for now. And uh, so here you go. Spreadsheet is basic concepts here. Uh, this is a document. So we're going to save it, actually. Uh, we'll save it. Oh, God, I'm not saving it to iCloud. Um, we'll save it to my desktop, and we'll call it a sample document. And you'll see it's doc dot numbers. Um, so a numbers document uh, is a spreadsheet, but it can have many sheets. So you can actually hit the plus sheet button up here you get two sheets so you might use one sheet to track expenses and another sheet to track uh, consultants come and you can spell consultants right yes you can congratulations um, and inside of each uh, sheet you can actually have multiple tables as well um, so I'll show you this one real fast I'll create a new uh, table. Uh, how do you create your tables? See, this is why you should uh, test things before you do it. Okay, so there you go. So here's a sheet with multiple tables in it. Um, I don't do this a lot. Uh, once in a while, I'll keep kind of like, like if I have a system with like categories here, I'll have a list of all the sample categories that I like over in another table. But um. But anyway, for now, uh, we're going to keep things basic, and we're just going to do one table. Um, you may notice that uh, in this first table that they give you, the first row is all light gray, and the first column is all light gray. And what those are are header rows and columns. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select the column A. I'm actually going to delete it. And up here, I'll type in the word date. And... Um, Basically, uh, let's say today is, uh, well, what is today? Today is 4, 10, 13, so today is April 10th. And um, we're going to fill this thing with some dates. So you can type in dates here. Actually, I moved to that one. Didn't mean to do that. Move that back. Um, but the first thing uh, that's kind of interesting with, uh, I guess, just data entry here is that... Uh, you'll have this uh, selection, th and, and then in the corner you have this little circle. Um, and if you touch that and drag that, basically you can start to do sequential things. So you can see in this case we're doing, it'll automatically notice that it's a date, and it'll start to sequential it, uh, you know, by each date. Um, you can uh, do this all kinds of interesting ways. So let me, so let's try something else. Let's try 1-1-2013. And, you know, if you start to spread it, you'll see, of course, the, um, the first one. But let's try down here. We'll try 2-1, 2013. And then we'll select both of these. So the way I'm selecting these is I'm clicking in this, then I'm holding the shift key down, and then I'm clicking into this one, and that'll kind of add to the selection. And then I start to stretch, and then all of a sudden I'm getting the same sequentials, but it kind of notices how your... Uh, how much you're jumping in between each one, which is uh, kind of cool. Um, so yeah, and so the the anyway, we were getting back here. This this these header rows. So the the thing about a header row is is that if this was not a header row, um, and I don't know if I can turn off a header row. Uh, I don't know. Let's just delete the row, and then we'll add a row above, and we'll type in date. Um, and we'll sort ascending, and we'll sort descending. And as you can see, you know, depending on how you're doing things, things will change. But now let's uh, convert this to a header row. And you'll notice, you know, the header row will always stay in place uh, at the top. Um, this is useful for sorting, this is useful for printing, and all kinds of stuff like that. So, um, 
This is an expenses uh, sheet, and actually, let me delete this. That's not what I want. Um, uh, I want to do uh, what is this category and cost? Actually, no, it's cost before category. So I'm going to make up a sheet here to. Uh, keep track of my expenses and do, do, do. so we're just doing some stuff here um, basically deleting columns you can resize columns um, I actually have some sample data I made up here random expenses and this is just a CSV file and if you try to open up any kind of CSV file in uh, numbers it'll just open this up so I'm going to actually delete that top row, copy this data. So this is dates, uh, amounts, and then category for the content. And I'll just paste it in. And you'll uh, notice a bunch of things. Uh, so we got a cost column here. Um, you can, of course, change the format. You can make them center, left, right, whatever you want. Uh, you'll notice that these are just decimal numbers. If you want to make them uh, currency, you can just basically format, oh, okay, so you bring up the inspector. So the inspector will inspect different objects. So at the far left is the documents, then the tables, then the cells, then the graphs, and the cells, and the fonts. So what you actually want is the cells. So we're gonna select the entire column by clicking the B up here. And, um, and yeah, you can just choose currency, and then this will automatically pick the currency kind of based on your system, but you can change it according to however you want, and then we'll leave it like that. Um, if the view is hard to see, uh, you have a couple different options. Um, you can select everything and pick a new font and pick a new font size. Um, the one problem with that is if you constantly want to do that, it's a little tough because every time you create a new sheet, it'll automatically create a sheet at like 10, which is, uh, I think it's 10 what they automatically created at. Uh, and it's a little hard to see, but you can also come down here to the zoom view and choose to zoom the entire thing up to like 150 or 200%, which is really nice. Um, helps you uh, just, you know, read it a little bit easier. Um, so here we go, we have a bunch of sample data, basically a date, a cost, a category. Uh, typically, um, in my own uh, systems, I have a notes column, which is where I write what the license was, what the office supply was, what conference the ticket was for, and so forth and so on. Because this is all gibberish data, I didn't bother to make up gibberish notes. But um, that's the way it typically is. And uh, so you can do kind of interesting things here. You can sort to uh, sending or descending and kind of get a sense of, you know, all the totals here. Um, uh, one thing you can do, and this is kind of throughout all of the spreadsheet stuff, but as you select the rows, like if you select, um, you know, multiple rows, so I've selected these three, down here you'll see the total, the sum of those three uh, cells, the average, the minimum, the maximum, and how many you've actually selected. Um, if you drag in these things into a particular cell, it'll drag, you'll see the value. Now, be aware that it's not really the value that's in this cell, it's the formula. And that's what's up here in this upper corner here. This is called the formula bar. Um, so if you were to try to, uh, actually let me edit out of here. If you try to edit this, this will bring up the formula editor. And in this formula, the formula is e this cell equals sum of B colon b4 and that's basically the range of b2 to b4 and you can hit x or ok and ok with that um there is no way to actually like uh you know um get the value from here very easily like basically you can like if you hit uh, edit copy um on this formula and you were to copy it and paste it up here um Actually, I don't know if you can do that. Copy, paste, reference is bad. I wonder if you can edit paste value. Oh, you can still paste value. That's what I like doing a lot of times, is just pasting the value. So when you 
when you actually go into edit it, you don't see the formula, you see the value. But anyway, um, kind of rambling here, but, uh, so this is our, uh, list of expenses, and it's got them all by advertising, of course. Um, it would be helpful to, um, also sort them by date. So you can sort an individual column, uh, via, you know, the column menu up here, but if you want to sort mul multiple ones, what you want to do is open up the more option. And uh, it's actually up here in reorganize. I don't know why they say reorganize. But you can sort, uh, you know, by multiple ones. So you can say first sort it by category and then sort it by date. And it'll do that. And now advertising is first. And it's January through December. So forth and so on. Um, so that's kind of nice. And then the other th cool thing that you can do here is you can categorize a column. So this is a, a column full of categories. So if you hit categorize... Um, what it'll do is it'll kind of change up the entire layout here where they are grouped. Um, so now they have very distinct groups of, uh, you know, the stuff. And what's really cool is you can choose to show the subtotals. Actually, no, the, uh, automatic, or no, up here subtotals so now you can use the disclosure triangles to kind of hide all the other ones and you'll see that you know advertising has these entries and this is the total for it um, and what I like to do a lot of times is like I'll do this I'll select this I'll copy it and then um, you know inside of like a text edit document I'll uh, paste it, and I got all my values. And this is something maybe you could send to a uh, an accountant or something of that nature. Um, and then you can just uh, reopen them all up. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a, a one-click to do that. I think you have to do it each time, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so this is just a quick little uh, screencast just to show you a couple little tricks and of the trade you can use with numbers. Um... Uh, if you guys like this, let me know. Maybe I'll do another one showing some of the profit loss statements that I do, uh, which, you know, I don't know, kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully this helps uh, people who are interested in checking out numbers. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.